Here at Rio Tinto, we run autonomous trains. That means they're unmanned. They only run on the main line. Around the yards, they, they, uh, they're they driven by drivers, as they always have been. And when they get to the point where they're ready to depart, we set them up for what's called auto haul. That's our trademark name for it. So I've just pulled an empty train out of the dumper, and I've tested the brakes, etc. And I've gone through the process of setting up for auto haul. It's quite a lengthy process involves a lot of pushing of buttons, waiting for something to happen, building the air up, yada yada yada. And we're at the part now where we're actually going to send it on its way. So, uh, I've, I've got a couple more things to do here, and then we'll go around to the side of the, uh, the desktop here, throw a switch, then we'll lock the cab up, get off, throw another switch that's on the outside, call up the controller and tell them it's ready to go, and then we'll watch it disappear into the sunset. So these are the ATP switches. This one is the on and off switch, and this one is the selector switch for which mode it's going to be in when it's on. So we have passive, that's the old system where the driver drives the train. We have uh, driver assist, which has the driver driving the train, but there's a screen on the, uh, or there's a display on the, uh, on the screen there showing him what to do and when to do it, like take a throttle notch now, put some brake on now. That was the forerunner to auto haul, that's uh, when it was in the testing phase. Then we have uh, uh, attended, right, that's where the train is driving itself but there is a driver on board, again that was uh, a later part of the testing phase. And then we have driverless, so which is uh, what the name implies, nobody on board at all. So we'll throw this switch over to driverless. Now we'll lock the cab up and get out. Yeah, part of the requirements for running an unattended train or an unmanned train is that all the cabs have to be locked so that if it pulls up in a, in a siding somewhere or stops for any reason, people can't you know, board the train, get into the cab and, uh, and play with the controls. So I've already locked up the, uh, the cabs on the other two locos. So we'll lock this one now from the inside. And now we'll uh, go out through the front and lock the front door from the outside. There'll be a padlock hanging somewhere around here. It's usually on that little chain there, but it could be anywhere. So we'll take that padlock. Close the door behind us. ML25. ML25, cut down. Uh, PFM for 8110, thanks. We're just sitting through a PFM for 8110. Right. Hit. bells will ring, the horn will sound, and then the loco will move off by itself.
that train is going, but the furthest mine that we have is about 500 kilometers out. So let's say it goes there, that, that this train will go 500 kilometers, go through the loadout, load itself, and travel all the way back with nobody in the cab.